I'm not much of a smoothie guy. Maybe not the best way to start this video out. Let me rephrase that. When I'm in the mood for a smoothie, I have a few rules, and none of them include kale. start this off by saying don't try to convince me to put kale in my smoothie please you cannot hide the flavor of the kale from me okay it doesn't matter if there's one single shred of a kale leaf in there i know it's in there and i'm gonna gag okay now what we are going to talk about is we're going to talk about the elements of what make a good smoothie to me and hopefully you'll be able to pick something up from that so with the kale no longer in the conversation let's do this shall we Okay, so we're gonna break this down into a few different categories. The first one is which liquid you choose to use. There's dairy, which you can do milk, or you can do a dairy-free milk, like almond milk or coconut milk. There's fruit juices, like orange juice, which I feel like is the most popular choice, to be honest. And of course, there's water. Real water. The liquid is really only there to thin the smoothie out to the consistency that you want. So think about what you want that to add. Is it gonna dilute the flavor, or is it gonna add sweetness, or is it just gonna make it creamy? That's what you need to think about when choosing a liquid. Now the next part is going to be about fruit, obviously. In my opinion, it's way better to use frozen fruit. If you have fruit that's about to get too ripe, cut it up and freeze it and then use it in a smoothie. I really don't like adding ice to most smoothies just because although it makes it nice and frosty, it dilutes the flavor a sh ton. So, you know, by using frozen fruit, you're still getting that frosty element without losing any flavor at all. So, you know, just think about it in the sense of how frosty you want it. If you add ice cubes, it's going to dilute the flavor. So, you know, that's really only applicable to certain scenarios. Now, next thing we're going to talk about is vegetables. This is a more recently popular thing. You know, people are adding like spinach or beets or whatever. You know, I also really like carrots in there. There's a lot of options here. Uh, we're not talking about kale. You know why we're not talking about kale. Um, if you want to put it in there, then more power to you. My top picks would be carrots, beets, spinach, and fennel. And last but not least, let's not forget about miscellaneous stuff. Now, you can do lots of things to add nutritional value or just flavor, whatever you want. You know, fresh herbs, spices. You can add fats like coconut oil or peanut butter, fresh avocado. You can also even add honey if you want extra sweetness. I also think that there's a lot of room for experimentation here. You could add, if you have preserved lemons that you made from my preserved lemon recipe, which will be in the link in the description if you haven't seen it before, you could totally add those. You know, there's, there's you, the sky is the limit, whatever flavors you're thinking. Now let's give some actual examples here. So first we're gonna make an orange carrot mango smoothie. Now you're gonna start off with half a cup or 120 milliliters of orange juice, a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of water, one medium sized carrot sliced up, one small fresh peach cut up, half of a frozen banana, and one cup of frozen mangoes, which is about 155 grams. You know, and then just give that a little blend until it's nice and smooth. You know, if you need to add a little bit of water just to loosen it up, you can. I wouldn't recommend adding more orange juice because it's already pretty sweet as it is. Next, we're gonna do a classic strawberry and banana smoothie. So first start with one cup or 236 milliliters of orange juice, two cups or 255 grams of frozen strawberries, and one whole frozen banana. Now notice how I've been putting all the liquid down first before I add any solids, and that's just a protective measure to keep the blade from getting damaged, so always put your liquid down first. Blend it until smooth and enjoy. Now this one's a little more non-traditional. This is a chocolate peanut butter smoothie. So basically you're gonna start with three pitted dates, a half a cup or 120 milliliters of whole milk or almond milk or whatever dairy-free milk you wanna use. Um, and we'll just ignore the fact that I added the milk after the dates. Let's just pretend I didn't do that. One whole unfrozen and ripe banana, one tablespoon or 14 grams of cocoa powder, two tablespoons or about 40 grams of peanut butter, and about two good handfuls of ice. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. Just add enough ice until it's as frosty as you want. Now I'm using ice in this because this shake is so strong on its own, I actually use the ice to dilute it and to give it some frostiness, which is why we're not using frozen stuff here. So you gotta, you gotta think about that stuff. Also, for the sake of the protection of your blender, maybe use crushed ice next time too, yeah. And the fourth smoothie is gonna be a ginger, spinach, pineapple, and lemon smoothie. So you're gonna start with half a cup or 120 milliliters of orange juice, a one inch or two and a half centimeter knob of ginger, two cups or 245 grams of frozen pineapple, one large handful of spinach, and then half of a lemon worth of juice and zest. And then blend it up and then suck it down your face. That's always nice to hear. But you wanna know what else is nice to hear? B-roll. Guys, 
sides, and that is it. So homemade smoothies, you know, it's uh, it's not that hard. It's 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 very it's very easy. Obviously, with this video being a little shorter, you know, it's just a little little thing. I know my uploads have been a few a little wonky the past few weeks. Uh, it's just been kind of crazy at the restaurant, but um, I actually just recently put my two weeks in, and it's my last day at the restaurant in a couple of days, which is super exciting. You know, I'm, I'm really excited. It's, it's bittersweet in a way, it's a little bittersweet. Um, and I might be talking about it a little more in another video, but I just wanna let you guys know. And more importantly, Fermentation Friday will be making a comeback very soon, maybe with a different name. That's, that's, as, that's as much as I'm gonna give you for right now. We'll, we'll keep the rest of it a mystery. Don't forget to keep sending your fermentation ideas to me on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. DM me, tweet me, all the links are below. Be sure to follow me if you don't already. And if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.